This video is continuing the story on modifying Rusty, my Tesla Model 3 long range, making it better, faster, brake better, just better all around basically. And today we're gonna to be taking some trim panels off to get to the little box that remapped Rusty to make it faster and give it drift mode. So let's get into it. <laughs> So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? That is amazing. So a big modification that I did on Rusty with the help of RHEL Engineering, Ralph and his crew, was to make it faster with the Nginx Boost 50. Now, I've really been enjoying the extra power and I might have uh, probably overplayed it, as uh, some comments said. Felt like my face was melting slightly but it was an amazing mod to make it quicker. But the reason I went for that particular mod instead of the acceleration boost is because of the drift mode and turning off the traction control. Because as uh, if people know me, they know that I like a drift. <laughs> Obviously on private roads, of course, but We've got a problem with the Nginx controller because the app isn't working. So today I'm going to be taking the trim panels off and um, unplugging it, plugging it back in and trying to make it work. So first of all, I've got some tools to help me with the trim removal, some trim removal tools. If anyone's messed around with the trim before and broken stuff, which I certainly have, these are great to be able to basically stop any breakages of the trim bits. I've got some uh, other little screwdrivers and some screw bits as well, just uh, if I get come across anything that needs undoing. I've also got a light because it's pretty dark down here and I need to get under here to remove this trim paddle to uh, unplug the Nginx Boost 50 module. But first of all, we need to turn Rusty off. Now, how do we do that? So I think it was maybe service? No, safety? There we go, power off, bang. Yes, we're off. Now, if you mess around with the doors, that will wake her back up. Remember, this is an early model and please go back and watch the previous video where we connected it and we fitted it. There are two different versions of the Tesla Model 3 non-Highland, um, and there are different ways to turn it off and making sure that uh, people don't realize that you're uh, playing around with the internals. Anyway, let's crack on. So first of all, we need to turn this light on because like I mentioned, it's pretty damn dark down here. There we go. So that will help me see what's going on. Yep, perfect. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I need to, that needs to be removed, that one there, and that one in the corner, and then this trim, trim panel should just come out and it should be tucked behind there. It should be as easy as that. But I'm probably gonna make a big zero out of it, so that'll be enjoyable watching. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. It's quite tricky to get everything going on. Right, what we need is a flat head of some description. Let's use one of these. So I just need to get into this trim panel here, pop this off, pop this one off and pop this one off. Now theoretically, there we go. So I just initially just popped off the trim piece. There we go. Okay, so how do we get to, uh, all right. I have to turn it back on again. Thanks. Let's shut the door. There we go, that woke up, because we need to open the glove box. Then we need to turn it off again. We never used these in the end. If you, if you remember watching the original video, um, I wasn't sure what these did, but essentially if you plug them in, you can stop other people using the performance. So if someone's getting in to the car and you don't want them to have the full performance, you can basically uh, stop that from happening. How the flipping heck? So this should theoretically just come out. Just leave that open for now. Okay, that's one. Okay, one, okay. One of them's just fallen out, which is good. Put that somewhere where I know where it is. I feel like I need to go back and watch my video to remember how he did it. Do I take the whole thing off? I'm gonna go watch the video and remind myself because I don't want to break stuff. 
I went back and watched the video and I thought you had to take the glove box out and that's exactly what we thought originally but actually you don't it's just this plastic panel so and it is literally just those three clips which are here I just need to massage it without breaking it there we go very useful tool look at that look at that now I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this yourself and this is why I didn't do it myself in the first place but you've got you've got to get involved sometimes haven't you and it should be an easy fix unplug it plug it in it back in again it's you know it's the IT fix so I'm going to do that now and uh, hopefully I can record it so you can see it properly too to make things better it started raining outside good old UK kind of love it don't you right so let's do it have we got can we see it yes we can so it should be just a simple question of unplugging these fellas he said there we go one that is the oh, that's the nice tri module so and this one is the oh, i guess we just give it 10 seconds plug them back in again and we test it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten plug them back in again that one in there like so this one here like so let's go on to my phones right, let's turn on the vehicle go on the app on the phone and see if we can get the app to work much drier in here door's not looking so pretty so let's uh, turn this on there we go right now we're going to go to the phone so what we do first is we go to wi-fi then we turn wi-fi on we find the engine exit there we go internet not available there we go so we're connecting to the engine x now it's connected we now go to 192.168.0.1 go to that it's not working what have i done okay i'm not sure why that was happening but okay i'm connected and it's connected and it looks like let me just put okay it's working now so before as soon as i press one of these functions it didn't work so as you could probably tell, I was having a bit of an issue with the sound quality. It didn't get any better, although there was some good bits where there wasn't any issue with the sound quality inside the car when I was testing some of the functionality. I got it working. Happy days. So this is my bugbear with the engine X compared to the acceleration boost. The acceleration boost, yes, it is double the price, um, but you connect it. It doesn't take long to uh, connect to the Tesla. It works and it's fast. It doesn't give you the drift mode. It doesn't give you uh, turning off your traction control. And there are quite a few other features. So it's really down to, can you put up with the ins and outs of maybe having to unplug it, plug it back in again? You got the video now, so happy days. There is the warranty issue as well, the warranty. So uh, obviously it's less of an issue with my car uh, because my car's nearly done 120,000, it's done 113,500. And what I'm trying to do with charge heads is give this kind of content, trying to um, show people what can be done. And I'm not gonna do it worrying about warranty too much. However, I have heard that, you know, you can just take it out again. Um, you know, whether they'll be able to find out whether it's in there, whether they would, alter your warranty um i don't know is is the truth if anyone's had that experience please whack it in the comments obviously you know worst case scenario if a tesla tesla were to completely shut down your vehicle i'm only thinking about worst case scenario here um you know and you weren't al able to use the supercharge uh chargers out there that would be horrific but you know i don't know if that's possible but sometimes you've got to take a risk in life and i love drifting so and the functionality, what, what I didn't realize uh, to my absolute disappointment, not in just the software, but to myself, was I didn't realize that the acceleration boost wasn't actually working. The Boost 50 performance wasn't working. I did think a while back when it started playing up and the, the app started playing up that, oh, doesn't feel quite as quick. 
as soon as I connected it and took it out for a run, and I'll show you in the next video next week, um, going through the features, etc., and a feature that I didn't really know about, which is amazing to do with the region. Um, I uh, yeah, I put my foot down. I was like, wow, this is much quicker. I hadn't realised that the Boost 50 performance wasn't actually working when the app was down. So I'm like I said, I'm disappointed in myself. Um, I had a little inkling, but I, yeah. Just, just one of those things. They're quick anyway, aren't they? I mean, it's half a second. Does you can feel it, but it's still a quick car. So, in summary, I think Nginx could try and make it a little bit easier. Um, I do like the functionality. However, there are a few functions that I'm going to show you in my next week's video that I was testing out, and I have not got them to work. And don't know whether that's because I've got an older Tesla, or I don't know if I'm not doing it right, which is highly likely. Um, or there's another reason. So I'm going to keep communicating with Nginx and, and keep giving you content to show you what's out there, what can be done. I suppose the, the question that you might ask is, is it worth it? You know, I think it is. Um, but let's talk about that more once we go through more of the features and once we've done a proper drifting session in Rusty where it's safe and legal to do so most importantly. See you next time.